Hello everyone, congratulations for the winner for the CMP project. Uh, I'm Cancelon, an amazing student at the SCAT. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. I would say I'm an easygoing person, but many times it bugs me that if I'm happy about something, you will probably know it. And if I'm upset about something, you will probably know it as well. Pretty much straightforward. Nothing to hide. But let me tell you something that you don't know about me. I'm a middle child of my family, and I always felt like an outsider. With inability to communicate within the family and even in the world around me. I didn't do well in school since the very beginning. Even in football, which was basically my childhood dream, everything for me, I would say. I didn't do well. Need a little more on that to laugh. I had no even basic achievements, so my parents would be proud of me. However, my older brother, he was an good example. And I always tried to imitate his hobbies and his lifestyle, especially when it comes to painting. A very common sentence that I heard a lot from other teachers was like, Satan, you're too able and you do have the potential, but you don't try and still cook it. The more they said that to me, the more I thought the opposite. And these, well, the desire to be belong, is carried me through. At the age of 18, I joined the military compulsory service in Israel. And I didn't fit there either, although I had enormous courage to serve in the, in the military service. I simply didn't like the troop where they put me. For me, it wasn't exciting enough. And when I realized that I cannot move somewhere else, or just to another troop, I simply ran away. I went able. It was very extreme act. But I didn't care about myself, I didn't care about the consequences. And after a while, when I went home, I got a call. Nine. To some of you, maybe you like to get a call from your boss, your most terrifying uh, professor, I don't know. In my case, it was my officer, Israel, that's his name. And he called me and he said, where are you? Well, what's going on with you? And I said, well, you know, I just ran away from what I wanted to paint. It was only an excuse. I did paint, but it was only an excuse, to be honest. And then he said to me in a very straightforward manner, like, well, what the hell are you talking about? Are you supposed to be at the base? Well, anyway, you will see you at the base very soon. True? I went back, and quickly upon arrival, they threw me in a military prison. It was the first time that I was completely alone, physically, emotionally, mentally. To where I started to doubt my potential even more. And I started to doubt whether life was worth living or how can I how could I make it worth living. As you can imagine, there was nothing much to do in the cell. Uh, basically, you have to look on the walls and think and think. But it happened that there was a fashion magazine on the floor. So I randomly opened it. And it was the first time, actually, that I, was, that I fully read an article in Hebrew, not even in English. And it was also the first time that I was quite impressed with myself. Be honest with you. <laughs> and it also had uh, was a book in the cell. And I was terrified just looking at the books. Maybe because uh, my father and teacher used to tell me about, to guide me about reading books and the importance of it. And it's happened that I realized that life is offering me something new, a new experience. And for all the three years in the military service, I, yeah, that's the reaction. I read mostly self-improvement books, 
group doesn't make an impact. And I read the book uh, Intimacy by Emotion. I read the book uh, The Interpretation of Dream by Damon Forward. But the book that stood out to me the most was The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by uh, Joseph Merity. The author had a very strong point of view of see the treasure out of infinity within you. It might sound like a cliche, but and maybe it is, but back then my bathroom was so empty that even the most scarred information was like a friend. And I started to look inward myself, and I realized that actually potential is a, is a natural human thing. And to pay attention to the emotion that people, and me in particular, at that time, tried to ignore and hide. And I also realized that there was a whole personality in me that I never paid attention to. And, you know, maybe I have yet time to explore. And I thought maybe now I can go back to tank again, but maybe now in my own way. Now, you may have to understand, I never formally trained as an artist or as a painter. The only reason that I could possibly paint was because I used to support my brother, who was better than me. And I think for me, it was also an act of self-proof that I am able to paint without any special training. In some of my early paintings, you might see that there are no faces. But what you don't see is that I struggle with identity. I had a problem just to imagine a certain face and drive on canvas. I prefer to come from a modern place, so there is always room for me to imagine myself in any expression of the canvas. So, and I also like the idea that I don't have to be defined or judged. I also wanted to use my art as a tool to communicate with people around me. But I'm talking about my friends, my family, common people, not art critics or something. I really try and I really like the idea of moving the viewer inward and outward from the canvas. Not just like visually, even physically, I try to convey this idea to share my own experience or even to offer something of myself. In fact, this painting brought me enough confidence that I was, I would say, very, very lucky to display them in some exhibition. And one of the visitors who actually came to see my art to the exhibition was the officer from the army who arrived. The guy on the left, the gentleman on the left. And it was a beautiful experience, and it's helped me a lot to grow as an artist. But to be honest, I still didn't find my spot in society, and I still wanted to be like belong to somewhere. And that's wrong to look outward over the world, if you wish, whether it's like just another time to escape or just a place where you don't have to be defined or judged or people wouldn't expect you to, for you to be defined. And here's when my father, a very wise man, said to me, you know, why don't you try something different? Why don't you go to China, a country with very rich history? And I was very, uh, I was very spontaneous, and I said, you know, why not? I will just go on, on a solo trip. On a solo adventure myself. It took me like two days to make the decision. And I went to China. But instead of staying in the big city, I went even farther away from the world that I used to, where that landscape stretched out before me. And it was a beautiful, amazing experience. Later, I tried to convey this outside world into my own life. This is an example of an artwork where I composed different images, uh, mostly from China and Israel. And I just did this by uh, painting to harmonize it in a way. I tried to convey the theme of the lonely landscape in China from my own eyes. And I also tried to convey the, the, the idea that we, me in particular, like, always try to move forward, plan our things, Having a direction, but we actually don't know how we 
Every time that we're working, we work on some track, doing some tracking, we never know how it's going to end. And that was the beauty of it. I also felt like I'm running out of time, even nowadays. Like, because I just started this school, I just started to see new things. And at some point I was like, what if I can just stay at the point where I am at, and let the time go by, just leave me alone where I am at, and just let me enjoy the environment just like where I'm staying. I was a stranger over there, but I felt really comfortable in the place where I, where I was. I like, it's like I felt even kind of belong into my painting. I even felt like I'm kind of relieved in my own imaginary world with, with magic and wonder. This self observation of all these beautiful experiences added a lot to what I wanted to express. And it's also made me quite frustrated in how little I can express in a static single frame. But what was interesting about that is was Hong Kong was my final destination after China. I don't know if you know, but Scott used to have a gallery in the Central. And I happened to be just wandering by, and I walked in, like in the same way I would walk into other galleries. And I had a conversation with the, with the person in the gallery, and I told her about my experience about my feelings. And she said to me, you know, why don't you go on campus, see if there's anything for you? And I was like, okay, like, this, this is my trip. That's my adventure. It's all about finding new things. For sure I will go. And on campus, I realized that all these ideas that I had in my head, that I didn't know how to express, can actually be told in a medium that was seamlessly that it wasn't longer static like what I used to do. And in fact, that's how I became an, an, an animation student with Scott. It was very appealing to me the idea that animation can, with animation, you can basically create anything you can imagine. Like if you can imagine with animation, I believe you can make it. But I also think like before a person, an you know, animator, Try to develop his own artistic style or his own animation style. There is a lot to, to learn from uh, lighting, movement, texturing, the principle of animation, and it's endless. And that's what I like in that field. There is no end to how much you can learn. You know, I also find it very funny. What a coincidence. Back then in the sale, I found inspiration for reading. At SCAD, a place where actually I come to express this inspiration, those inspirations, I found a sale, a gem. <laughs> it's like following me everywhere I go. I, I'm going to China, I just follow him. Sorry, Hong Kong. And I, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. I went back home to Israel and back and forth to China. And I still feel like an outsider. But I also learned that there's already something that shaped me as a person. That in fact, I'm not longer an outsider here or there. I'm just simply myself. And the point of it is anyone try to reshape themselves according to the outside, they will lose themselves from the inside. Self-acceptance is a hard journey. But your own person, the personality, your personality, the person that is within you, is the best companion you will ever have. Let it explore, let it strive, 